Mm. Jai Gurdu, Jai Masters. The great Persian poet Rumi once started one of his lectures and he said, and the subject tonight is love. All deep, meaningful things are very misunderstood by us humans. The reason is, everything we do is based upon the foundation that I am not okay inside and I need things to happen that will make me be okay. And love is definitely one of those. I'm lonely, I need somebody. I don't feel worthy, I need someone to dote over me. I really feel much better since I'm with this person or with that person. I want to spend the rest of my life with them because they make me feel better. I've never felt so good. All of it sounds very romantic. It's the stuff country music is written about, etc. But it's a total misunderstanding of love. It's not love. That's, I'm not okay, and you're helping me be okay. That's nice. It's a wonderful thing. To, I'm not telling you to throw it away. But it's not even close to deep enough. Love is a real thing. It's not an exchange. It's not a bargain. It's not a taking. It's not a need. Love is a state inside of you. It's a real thing. It's an energy flow. When the energy is free to flow up, and is not blocked by lower centers, it finds its way to the heart. You want to think of them as chakras, I rarely talk about that. This is not necessary, you give it a name. If I ask you where you feel love, every one of you point to your heart. You don't point to your head or your foot, right? There is a real energy center, and when it is free to flow, the energy, the shakti, the chi, the spirit, call it whatever you want, makes it up to the heart. And when it makes it up to the heart, it's very, very beautiful. It is a feeling of elation, is a feeling of upliftment, is a feeling of freedom, is a feeling of who cares? As long as I feel this, I'll live outside with you in the rain. It won't last very long. But anyways, that's how love talks, all right? You're everything to me. I would give my life to you just to be with you. As even for a minute, I would swim the ocean. <laughs> Both are nice, right? <laughs> Go swim the ocean. Anyways, so it comes up. It makes it to the heart. It makes it to that center. It's not your physical heart. It's a spiritual space inside. And the energy comes up, and it comes into that center, and it's beautiful. There's no question about it. But what did James Taylor say? There ain't no doubt in no one's mind that love is the greatest thing around. All right? It's not the greatest thing around. It's not. That's the fourth chakra. There are seven of them. You want to have a nice talk? <laughs> okay. But look how nice it is compared to the rest of the stuff. That's because when it can't make it up into this center... It hangs out in lower centers. And we might as well just get a little foundation there. What do you mean lower centers? There is a center of energy inside you. What does that mean, a center of energy? It means it activates a personality, activates thought patterns, it activates emotion patterns, it activates motives. It's a center where the energy, your chi, your shakti, centers, and then it activates from there. That's all. You know, it's like electricity. If electricity goes to a blender, it blends. If it goes to a vacuum cleaner, it vacuums. If it goes to a TV, it plays. Do you understand that? Same electricity. So likewise, when the energy makes it to different centers, an entire different personality manifests. Totally different thought patterns. You can go from terrible thoughts to beautiful thoughts in a fraction of a second. All you have to do is think that someone's out there talking to somebody else and you get jealous and all of a sudden they walk towards you, really get uptight and they say, I haven't introduced you to my brother yet. I didn't even tell you I had one. We didn't. All of a sudden, whoa. It releases and all this wonderful energy. Yes or no? It doesn't take anything to shift those energies. What is that about? It is about the fact that you have blockages inside of you. And because you have blockages inside, the energy cannot flow past those blockages. Or to get past the blockages, everything has to be exactly right. That's why you're so sensitive and you have lots of likes and dislikes and particular way things need to be for you to feel okay. Because everybody has different blockages, just like water flowing around rocks. Depending on where the rocks are located, the water will flow different ways and it will give off different eddies and currents. And so it's the same thing inside of you. It's that simple. So if the energy doesn't make it to the heart, it can't go up into the heart. Why? Because of the blockages. Where does it go? It goes to the center below that. What is that center like? Well, you know what the heart center is like. 
Tell me the truth. In the heart center, you want to hug, you want to be together, you want to give, you want to spend time together, you don't care about anything else. Do you understand that? Yes, I had a career, I wanted to do this, and I was growing, I had all my plans, and then I fell in love. It's so common, all right? I fell in love. Now everything I wanted to do, I don't care about anymore. I just want to be with you. I was building this house, and it's so beautiful. It's the dream. But you have a house, and you want to say, yeah, okay, I'll sell my house. That's what happens. That's how love talks, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it sweet? It's cute as a button, all right? Because when it comes up here, there's a different you. There's a different personality. There's a different way of looking. All you care now is to keep the energy up there. You don't need money. You don't need this. You don't need to travel. You don't need, right? Okay? Surely you know what I'm talking about. When it's not going there, because it can't make it up to there, what is it like? This one you know very well. The center below, when it can't make it up to the heart, is not about somebody else. And it's not about love. It's about I'm not okay. Maybe I'm not okay. I don't feel love, all right? But in any event, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. And I need to be okay. I need to make sure that things don't happen that make me worse. I need to make sure that things happen that make me better. Love doesn't have to talk like that. Why? Love is okay, right? You want to go to the movies? Whatever you want, darling. What movie you want to go to? Well, you would like this one, darling, but, but you won't like it. I don't care as long as we're together. Oh, it's so cute. Don't tell me it's not true what I'm telling you, all right? Because you're okay, you don't need things to be a certain way. Do you understand that? You just want to be okay, and you are okay. But when you're not okay, you're trying to be okay. So you're bothered by things, you get anxious, you get upset, all kinds of stuff is going on, because I'm not okay, I'm not okay, and I need to go to the party, and no one better wear the same dress or suit that I'm wearing. I went to a lot of trouble to get something unique. I want to really stand out. Why do you want to stand out? Because I want to be special. Why do you want to be special? Because I need people to like me. Why do you want people to like you? Because it makes me feel better. How about you? I don't want people to not like me. Why? It makes me feel worse. I want people to say nice things about me. Why? Why do you want people to say nice things about you? Truth has to be willing to ask everything. Why do you care you don't even care what they say about you. You care what they think about you. Do you understand that? If you hear someone, I heard that someone wasn't thinking good thoughts about you. That bothers you. Why? Why? Because you're not okay. And because you're not okay, you need things to be a certain way that will make you feel a little bit better so that people can manipulate you because they can tell you, oh, I, I like you and you're good. And all of a sudden you're following them. Or somebody can say, if you do that, I'll never talk to you again when you're not doing it anymore. You understand that? That's because you're not okay. You understand that? You have to start there. That's the center below the heart. It is a center that is not okay. I am not okay. But in that particular center, the way you try, it's called its called the social center, right? You try to be okay by interacting with other people, places, things, and trying to get them a way that you think will make you feel better. Anybody guilty? Can I repeat that? <laughs> right? You interact with the world outside of you, all of it. Right? To try to manipulate and control people's behavior, thoughts, and patterns toward you so that when they interact with you, you feel better. You dress that way. Why do you care what you're wearing? You don't care. You care what other people care. Why, what do you mean? I, I love that it's considered spiritual. How to win friends and influence people. A yogi says, Well, why would you want to do that? It's very simple because I'm not okay. And if they're my friends, they'll treat me better so that I feel better. And if they're not my friends, I have to care what they think about me, and I have to worry about what I say and what I do, but my friends are much more tolerable, so it's much easier for me to not be okay around my friends than my enemies. And why do I want to influence people? Because I can make them be the way I need them to be so I can be okay. All right? It's just nothing. It's just, it's just the most amazing thing. It's because we live in the lower center, and so does everybody else, that we don't question these things in any way, shape, or form. Right? We just do our best to make them happen. We do our best to have people like us. We do our best to hang out with people that are friendly to us. We do our best to avoid people that will make us feel bad. We do our best to live in a place that the, even the weather has to be the way we want, doesn't it? We try to live in a place where it's not too humid, it's not too cold, it's not too hot, et cetera, et cetera. We have all these conditions that in order for me to not be worse and to be somewhat okay, I used to play years back in the 70s. I'd give a talk and say, if you want to know the state of a human being, ask them how they're doing. Go on. How are you doing? Not bad. Oh, well, that's great. How you doing? It's been worse. How you doing? I'll get by. What is that telling you? I'm not okay. We're not doing well. Do you understand that? 
We need things. We want things. We're trying for things. We hope for things. All of it is saying the same thing, that the starting position is, I ain't doing so well in here. And I've seen that some things make me feel better, so I want those things. And I feel that some things make me feel worse. I don't want those things. Is that fair enough? All right. That's the lower chakra. I don't want to use chakra. That's the lower center. And that's where everybody is, except for some saints. All right? That's where everybody lives. That's what the whole world's about. And that's why the world's a mess. Do you understand that? Because if every single one of us is doing that, and there's 7.5 billion of us on the planet, and everyone's doing that, they're all trying to be okay, perfectly reasonable, trying to make happen what they want and not happen what they don't want, and no one agrees. If they tell you, oh, I agree exactly what you want, they want something from you and they're manipulating you. Why? I've discussed this with you. How did you come up with what you want and what you don't want? Since you're going to live there, we might as well talk about it, right? You've had past experiences. You can just make it up. You understand that? You saw a movie. You read a book. You saw somebody else. You had an experience in high school. Something happened. You understand that? And it left an impression. In yoga, we call those samskaras. It left an impression from the past inside of you. And that something is like a rock in the water. So now if the water, if this energy starts to flow toward that, and it was a positive thing, for example, you had a boyfriend named Ben in high school, junior high school, and it was the most perfect relationship in the world. And then somebody's trying to fix you up when you're 43 years old, right? With a blind date. And you say, well, what's his name? Ben. Oh, yeah, I like to go. You see a car that reminds you of something from the past? It changes it, doesn't it? It changes your energy because you have stored this stuff inside of you. And that's the whole crux of this stuff. You stored your past experiences inside of you. And now if they were positive and something's unfolding, it reminds you of that, you like it, you want it, you go toward it. If something was negative and it seems like that, I don't want it, I don't want to do with it, I'm not comfortable here, it's why you have moods. That's why you're comfortable in some place and not others. You have this stuff stored inside and it gets stimulated. So now in that center, in the one below the heart, you're in trouble. Why? Because there are only certain ways you're okay. And there are lots of ways that you're not. And now you are going to spend your life struggling. You know what that struggling means? Manipulating, controlling, worrying, anxiety, tension. What's that about? I'm trying to get it to be the way I need it to be so I can be okay. How about if I just sum it up right there? I'm trying to get it the way I need it to be so I can be okay. Anybody guilty? Anybody busy? And how busy are you doing that? 24-7 all the time, period. (laughs) It's so funny. That's what you're doing with your life. You're trying to get the moments unfolding in front of you to be the way you need them to be so that when they come in, you feel anywhere from not so bad to better. Okay? And good luck. Anybody caught on yet? It doesn't work? Anybody caught on yet? I I, I do that in the course that I want you all to take, the online course. I spent an entire hour discussing why that can never work. Why? Because the moments belong to themselves. There's reasons that the moment in front of you is the way it is. It's got history, doesn't it? If you want to know why things, people say, well, why did it have to rain on my birthday? Why did he have to treat me like that? Why, why did she have to die? Why did that have to happen? Right? Why did I get a B? Why is the teacher like this? Why did I get this teacher? Like, we say it all the time. In other words, it's not the way I want it to be. Why? There's an answer. Every single thing, every moment that's in front of you is the way it is because of all the influences that made it be that way. Right or wrong, there's influences, there's events, there's things that happened before that make it coalesce that way. It has nothing to do with you. That's the thing I say that and people can freak out. The moment in front of you has nothing to do with you. What's the matter with you? <laughs> All right? How can it have something to do with you? Here, this has something to do with me. You're all sitting the way you're sitting, wearing what you're wearing. She's whispering to, oh my God, right? Well, then turn to the right. Because right now that has nothing to do with me because I'm not looking at it. I look at it, oh, it has something to do with me. Well, that's crazy. It all existed before you looked at it. There's no way that because you're experiencing it, you made it. Don't let them tell you that. It's not true. You want to know why things are the way they are? Study physics, chemistry, psychology, sociology. Just study all the sciences. And they'll tell you, you want to know why it rained on your birthday? Go to the meteorologist. The truth of the matter is the moment in front of you, which will only last a moment, don't worry. The moment in front of you has history, does it not? Like my favorite, because there's a lot of resistance to this when I tell people that the moment in front of you has nothing to do with you. I sit there, and the one I got right, and I see everybody's eyes light up. If your great-great-great-grandmother didn't meet your great-great-great-grandfather, you ain't here. And that goes for everything in between. Everything. It all had to be exactly the way it was for it to be the way it is. See? There you go. Now, what did you have to do with all that? How about nothing? 
Well, that's how much you have to do with the moment in front of you. It is just unfolding. It is the result of physics, chemistry, psychology, history. It is the result of all the billions and trillions of influences that have caused it to be that way in that moment. And you are now interacting with it and saying to it, no, don't be the way you are. <laughs> That's what you say to reality. No, don't be the way you are. I need you to be the way I want you to be and to not be the way I don't want you to be because I'm not okay and you're affecting whether I'm okay or not. There, if I never communicate anything else with you all, do you get that? Do you see that? What is the probability you're going to win? How about zero? There's zero possibility that you're going to win in this game of saying, I need the moments to unfold in front of me to be the way I want them to be. And the way I want them to be has nothing to do with them. It has to do with my past experiences, which has nothing to do with what's unfolding in front of you. <laughs> you grew up in Connecticut or somewhere else, and now you're here, and this moment has nothing to do with you. It's just the moment that's the result of all that ever was. So you wake up and you realize this center. Remember, we're going to talk about love, but I can't talk about love without talking about why there's not love. I don't want to talk about love. I want to talk about what you're doing to stop love from being there. Okay? So basically you look at it and you realize, so far this whole thing I'm talking about, the lower center, there's no love there. Except, I guess, commitment to yourself. Cause, and I don't blame you. If somebody's drowning, guess what they're thinking about? Themselves. <laughs> they're like, again, don't do that. Be selfless, darling. No, I'm drowning. I'm going to take care of myself, all right? And that's what you're doing inside. You're drowning. It hurts. It's not comfortable. It's scary. It's okay. There's insecurities and this and that and all kinds of garbage going on in there. All right? So you do the natural thing, which is grab and pull and manipulate and lie. People lie, too, if you haven't noticed. All right? They do all kinds of stuff. To do what? To try and get it. Why would somebody lie? Why would somebody lie? Because they think the truth will make happen what they don't want to happen, and the lie could make happen what they want to happen. That's the only reason in the whole world. So everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody. They're trying to get the moment in front of them to match what it is that their past experiences made them like and dislike. And since we none of us have the same past experiences, as I said to you, there's not a single, there's no soulmate out there. Don't do that. There's not a single person out there that has had the same experiences as you, is there? Okay, therefore, there's not a single person out there that wants the same thing you do. Shocking, isn't it? It's called wake up. I'm going to throw some cold water on you. All right? This doesn't sound like I'm talking about love, does it? It's not like I'm talking about no love. No, no, I'm talking about real love. I'm talking about real love. So basically, what you are trying to do, including with your relationships, is get it the way you think you need it to be so that you can feel better and not feel worse. And that's why you start relationships, and that's why you end them. People get married. They're not expecting to get divorced. Come on, and we'll never get divorced. We love each other. It's wonderful. Then they get divorced. Well, what happened? It didn't match what it was they needed it to be for them to be okay. You have these expectations made up based on your past experiences of exactly how you need it to be for you to be okay. And when it's not that way, everything, your job goes, your relationship goes, your head goes, everything goes. What is a state of depression? A state of depression is I need it to be a certain way for me to be okay. I have not been able to do it, and I've started to think I'll never be able to do it, all right? And I don't even have any hope left that it will be that way. And so it just got really dark in here, and I'm just stuck with the part of it's not okay, and I don't see any way that it will ever be okay. So you come down, and you sit there and say, what do I do about that? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do about it. You don't devote your life to trying to get what you want and avoid what you don't want. That is a losing battle. You're wasting your time. Every once in a while, something will line up. Woo, it's nice. I agree. And every once in a while, something will really not line up. Oh, it's hell, right? And you think that's the game to try and have more nice moments than not nice ones. If you're doing that thing of I'm not okay, and the only way I can be okay is to make the moments in front of me match the garbage I stored inside of me, you, you, that's the life you're going to live. You relegated yourself to not very much good times. So the question becomes, what can I do? And the answer is love. They say the answer is love. The answer is love. But not the love, <laughs> not the love that I'm not okay and you'll make me be okay. I'll love you as long as you behave the way I want and sign this contract, marriage contract, right? That says you'll be with me no matter what I do, if I'm stupid, right? And you'll do everything, right? It's like I'm trying to be okay. You're trying, I'm trying to make you make me be okay. That's not love. That's need. That's a bargain. That's attempting to manipulate to get things the way you want. Love happens, there is love, pure love. It happens when you remove the blockages. The reason you're stuck in the lower center and that you're not okay 
is because you have blocked the flow of the energy. And it can only come up to a certain level, then it needs to go out and try to protect itself and manipulate and control. All right? If you remove the blockages, I am assuring you, if you remove the blockages inside that are blocking the flow of the Shakti, of the Chi, the Spirit, call it whatever you want, the energy will naturally go up and all of those thoughts will go away. Almost instantaneously. You will no longer think about yourself. Why? You don't need to. You're not being selfless. A, a person who's truly selfless doesn't know it. They're not trying to. It's not a thing they're doing. It's, uh, I'm okay. If you're high and you're in a good place, there is no need. There is no way it needs to be. Like the wind is fun and the snow is fun and the cold is fun and the hot is fun and the rain is fun. Everything's fun. There's not a weather you like, right? You just like weather. There's not a person you like. You just like that there are people running around on the planet Earth. So if you can rise up to the higher center, you will not have a single problem in your life for the rest of your life. It is not dependent upon whether you're getting old. It's not dependent on whether people like you. It's not dependent on how much money you have. It's dependent upon where you're living in there. You live in the lower centers, which have constant needs to make things okay, or you live in the higher centers where you're always okay. All right? And don't doubt it. Every one of you are built that way, period. You have a higher place that's inside. Well, why can't I live there? Because you are blocked. Because you stored energies inside of you from your past experiences, and they are like rocks in your energy flow. They are causing the flow to not flow. So, well, how come sometimes it opens? Because somebody treats you exactly the way you want to be treated. Somebody looks exactly the way you like the way they look. Somebody wears exactly what you like them to wear. The party is exactly the way you wanted it to be. Somebody's saying exactly the things you want to hear. Very good. It's lining up with your blockages. And so because it lines up, there's this flow of energy. And all of a sudden, I'm in love. I fell in love. You should see what she was like. You should see what she said to me. It was everything I ever wanted to hear. Good, good. Come back later. It lines up. And then how come sometimes it's hell? Because it doesn't line up. It actually hits your, everybody gets your stuff hit. It hits your stuff so strong you could catch fire inside. The answer, I'm telling you, is not to go out there and try to momentarily make it be the way you want and make sure it's not. It is to remove the blockages so that your energy flows to a higher center and you don't have to play that game. If you're okay, you're okay, Right? Why? If a person goes to work who's in a lower center, they're going to work to get paid. They're going to work to prove themselves. They're going to work to express them. You understand that? They got something going here. You know how few people go to work to do the work? It's embarrassing, isn't it? You are going there for yourself. You have needs and you're trying to use the work to prove that you're better than other people, to prove that you can do this, to prove that you can make enough money to get what you want. So it, there's always need behind it, isn't there? A spiritual person, that's what I'm calling in the higher center, and again, we're just on fourth, we'll go higher a little later, right? That person would go to work for the same reason an artist paints, for the same reason a musician, a true musician plays the instrument. They go to work because they are so filled with love and juice that it's just blowing up inside. They want to express themselves, they want to make something, they want to create something, they want to give, they want to share this energy. Do you understand that? If you didn't pay them, they would go, don't tell them, they go tell your boss, they'd go just as much, doesn't make any difference. A true musician doesn't need to get paid and doesn't even need an audience. Do you understand that? They lose themselves in their music. A true karma yogi, a true person who's going to work, it is exactly the same. I can't wait to get to work. I wake up in the morning. I'm so enthused and so excited. But you've been doing the same job for 30 years. Yeah. And every single morning, I think I could do it better. It's so much fun. I try to get just a little bit better. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Right? It's not that there's one job that fits you. It's that you fit every job. Because you are so filled with love and joy that you could express it anywhere, at any time. All of it turns you on. This is the spiritual life. It's not about meditation. It's not about this. It's not about gurus. It's not about uh, what clothes you wear or what you eat. It's about coming to a higher center inside. Then all of it changes naturally. It's not about you disciplining yourself to be nice and make sure you give, try, you give, give a tithe a certain amount. So what are you doing? All right? When you live at this level, you don't understand why you have money because all you did was express yourself and all of a sudden they gave you this money. So you don't even think it's yours. Right? So there's nothing for you to give away. You're just like this channel, and it comes, and, and then it goes where it's supposed to go. It has nothing to do with you. You have no use for it. 
no use for it. <laughs> you already have everything you want, all right? But you take care of it because it's your responsibility. That is a much higher life. Your relationships are simple. What's a relationship with a higher person? I'm filled with love. Would you want some? I said, there's no thought of need. There's no anything. This uh, I was love pouring out of me. You're welcome to shower if you want. If you don't, fine. What's it got to do with me? Nothing. You're whole and complete within yourself. You can't imagine that state when you're in the lower center. But if you touch the higher center, you can. And everyone even touched a little bit. I'm talking about staying there, living there. There's only one way to do it. It's not by studying or doing this or that. It is about removing these blockages. If you remove the blockages, it all happens naturally, period. That's the highest thing you can learn. If you remove the blockages, there is nothing else to do. It will go up naturally. The Shakti is always trying to come up. All you have to do is release the blockages. You don't have to do anything else. I used to compare it to a hot air balloon. You have a hot air balloon, but it doesn't go up. Why? It's tied. The cords are tied. It's tethered to the ground. Right? Well, maybe let's put some more hot air in it. No. <laughs> don't do put more helium or heat in it. Untie the things, and it will go up all by itself. Imagine somebody saying, well, what do I do if I untie the tethers? How will I make it go up? Its nature is to go up. Your nature is extremely high, and you've never ruined it. It doesn't know what you ever did. There's no guilt. There's no this. There's no karma. Don't you dare let them talk to you like that. All right? You just, if you can remove the blockages... The energy will go up. It won't say, oh, no, I ain't going up for you. You did bad things. No, it doesn't do that. It's beyond all forgiving. It's not judging. It's basically saying you're the one who's hurting yourself. You're storing. If you're flogging yourself and you go to everybody saying, I don't understand why my back hurts. Uh, hello? And all of a sudden somebody says, don't get a salve and don't go to the chiropractor and go to the right, right doctors. Don't do that stuff, right? Just stop flogging yourself. Well, what would that do? Just wait and see. The minute you stop flogging yourself, your back will feel better. Isn't that amazing? Right? And it'll get better all by itself, and it will just keep doing that. It's exactly the same inside. The moment you stop storing that garbage inside of you, because that's what your blockages are. Had any experience in the past that still bother you? Those are the blockages. And don't you dare doubt it. Every single thing that ever happened to you that you didn't let go of, that you didn't just sit there and say, yeah, Yep, I was parked at the light, and I was doing my little smartphone, and the light changed. The guy went, bah! how you doing? Feel good about that? Right? What, what do you do the next time you pull up to a light, and it starts to pull up next to you instead of behind you? Same person. You embarrassed? You look the other way? I want to know. I want to know. Right? I want to know. I want to know next time you're driving down the street and you see a car that looks like that car. Do you stay way back? I'm, I'm going to get real personal. Right? How can that be? There was one second that someone went, Bleh! and it changed your life. Yes or no? Right? What is that? You didn't let it go. You didn't let there be a, Bleh! you sat there, I want to wait that long. People are so impatient. It's ridiculous. Oh my God, look what they did. I'm embarrassed. I don't like what people do. You made a thing out of it, out of <laughs> a little beef, and you kept it inside of you, didn't you? How do you know? Because it comes back up. It comes back up. The next time you see a car like that, what, please pay attention to me. That thing that you stored inside, I don't care how small it is, the tiniest thing like that, doesn't matter. You stored it inside of you, and it will affect your energy flow because where you store this stuff is inside of your energy flow. You're actually shoving it down into your heart, right? And it just stays down there. You don't think of it all the time, but it comes back up, all right? It's like all of a sudden, the two years later, you're, you're riding shotgun and somebody else stops at a thing, right? And they're using their phone. And you say to them, don't do that. Don't do that. Pay attention to the light. Oh, wow, you're weird. The person says, why? No, somebody will beep at you. Wow, so you had an experience and it got left inside of you, didn't it? I'm telling you, those are your blockages. You got a few of those? You got a few things over the course of your life that stayed in there? Okay, I'm telling you, the highest spiritual practice the highest, higher than meditation, higher than Kundalini Yoga, higher than anything you will ever do, is a commitment lifelong to not have that stuff inside of you. It will all happen by itself if you do that. If you are willing to let that stuff go, the energy will come up to the higher level and you will start feeling love for absolutely no reason in any way, shape, or form. You'll just be taking a walk outside and a bird will sing. <laughs> and your heart will pop open like you just met the love of your life. 
Do you understand that? Right? And then it'll start to stay open. That is how you're supposed to live. That is who you are. You're a great being. You're not a beggar. Some books on you say you're not a beggar. You're not out there begging other people to behave a certain way so that you can be okay. You're a great being, but you have blocked yourself. So if that's true, and it is true, and I, I, I show you examples all the time. You're driving down the street. You're going on, on your way to work. You drove down that road all the time, and all of a sudden, somebody runs a red light. It can happen. You ram on your brakes. You're skidding around, but nobody hits anybody, right? You end up on the side of the road. You're okay. You pull yourself together. All right? It's over. Is it over? Is it over? I want to know you're in a great mood. You're talking to somebody next time you drive down that road, right? What happens as you approach that light? Nothing? You liar. Your heart goes... <laughs> and your mind starts getting up, upset. And you, you, know, you hear me? That's a samskara. That, I was wondering, drive it home. That's what I'm talking about. That's a blockage. What do you mean? That situation is over. It did its thing. Why is it still blocked inside of you? You learn from it. You learn. You should be proud of yourself. You drove well. You learn people can run lights. You have to be scared of driving from then on. You drove down that road 7,000 times before. You understand that? You could have been on any road. But no, your thing makes a thing out of that road, doesn't it? Go march up and down. Go to city commission meeting. We need lights. We need triple lights. Quadruple lights. I need a policeman there all the time. We got weird because you couldn't handle one situation unfold in front of you. Can people get weird? You're going to get real weird because they store this stuff inside. It is not meant to be stored inside. I want to make it clear in case your mind is giving you some feedback, right? I'm not talking about memory. Memory is a totally different thing. Computers have memory, but they don't have these blockages. They're just a piece of data that got stored inside. It's an event that I had. Yeah, I almost got in an accident once. You're not freaking out. You're not crying. It's just you want to bring it back. You're welcome to bring it back. But it doesn't come back by itself. That's the difference. Do you understand that? It's not a trigger point. You couldn't handle it when it happened, so you suppressed it. We're getting into psychology now. You suppress it. You pushed it away. Now you can't handle every time anything's even close to it. When you hear tires screech, oh, you get all neurotic. But you didn't get neurotic three days ago before that. Why is it any different? Yeah, but to you it is. Why? Because you didn't handle it. You didn't process it. You didn't let it go. You didn't sit there and say, well, I almost got in an accident. Thank God I didn't. That was me. That was exciting. <laughs> That's far out. Right? Again, it doesn't happen very often. What if it happened again? I'll be fine. Uh, I'm now a veteran of almost accidents. It's a wonderful thing. I used to be scared. What would I do? I say I handled it well. You should feel better about it, not worse. But you don't because you don't process it. You don't neutralize it. You don't process it. We used to call it gestalt. It gets finished. It passes all the way through you. It did not pass through you, did it? You didn't like it, so you pushed it away. And now it stayed inside of you. And I'm telling you, those are your blockages. When I say blockages, that's it. Some scars, that's it. Big, small, anything. You got a bunch of those. So basically, spiritual growth is about releasing those block. One, not putting more in. Two, releasing the ones that are in. And I'm telling you, that's all you have to do. The rest will all take care of itself. The Shakti will come up. You'll start to feel love more. You'll start to be able to handle situations you weren't able to handle before. You'll start to look at the whole world differently. You look at people that are weird and say, ah, poor thing, right? It's compassion, right? You look out there, well, they don't have the love that I feel. Yeah, but if they felt this, they wouldn't be like that. I understand they have needs, you know, so they blame other people and their prejudice and all kinds of stuff. They just have all this compassion and love because you came to a higher place. Do not try to make your lower self be compassionate because it's not. And don't try to make your lower self feel love. How would, how would a loving person be? I'll try to be like that. Ugh. Love is a place inside of you. Don't imitate it from some place it's not. Do you see the difference? So the key is you remove the blockages. That's all it boils down to. Now the question becomes, how do you remove the blockages? Now that you understand if you want love, you can have love all the time. All the time. Period. Right? Your heart should not be controlled by another person. It should not be controlled by situations, places, or things. It is that way now because you have those blockages. Therefore, it opens and closes based on how it hits the blockages. In the end, there's... No door on your heart. It's blown away. All there is is openness, and the Shakti goes up into the heart, and it feeds you all the time. Who said that? Christ. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of the Father. 
you will understand it. When that energy starts flowing inside of you and you realize, I'm feeding off this stuff. I, <laughs> I used to only get it when you said nice things to me or when I liked what I was eating. Well, now it's there all the time. And someday, I said, we'll talk deeper. You're going to find out why did you say the mouth of the Father? Because you're going to find out where the energy comes from. While you are in need, you can't study any of this stuff. You're just out there trying to get what you need to be okay. When the energy starts flowing, you're okay. You don't need all these things to be like that way outside. At some point, you in there fall in love with the love. You're not in love with a person. You're in love with love. You understand that? You know how I know? If the person doesn't behave the way you want, you leave them. I thought you were in love with the person. Not if I don't feel love. See? You're in love with the love. <laughs> okay? Not to mention you left them for somebody else. Why? Because they started feeling love when that person showed up. It has nothing to do with the person. It has to do with how it's hitting your stuff. So basically, when you get to the point where the love is always flowing, right? Gibran says, love gives not but to itself, and love takes not but from itself, for love is sufficient unto love. It's a thing. All right? And when you have that flowing inside of you, then you have the love and you don't have to worry about all these different things. Everything's fine. Everything's wonderful. So then you fall in love with love. That's what I mean. Love is sufficient unto love. The truth is you're already in love with love, but you're projecting onto another person who helps you feel that. Once you feel it unconditionally, you will just love that energy flow. At some point, you're going to realize, I love this. Oh my, this is the love of my life. Where's it coming from? You don't know. It's just there. Yeah, that's, where, that's where meditation and stuff comes in. You start diving into the source of the flow. You follow the stream back to its source. That's real meditation, right? And everyone who ever did so, of every tradition and every age, said the same thing. That river of joy, of love, opens up to the ocean. It comes from the ocean, just like all the rivers start, <laughs> the water flow, and that's where, that's yoga means merger, right? The Christ said, my father and I are one. Then my prayer Baba said, my consciousness was a drop of water. It fell into the ocean. Find it. Not a chance in the world. That's what merger means. That, that's why I tell any of my students, I said, do not ever say you're enlightened. Don't, even, don't go after anybody who says they're enlightened, right? That's enlightened. Okay, and there ain't too many that ever walked around this earth. That's what it means to be enlightened, that that individual consciousness dropped into the ocean of oneness, and there's no separation. You can have an enlightening experience. You're welcome to have that, but reserve the words properly, <laughs> right? So basically, we have this flow. It comes up, and now you start your spiritual journey. I'm not going to get into it. You realize that is only the fourth chakra. There's five, six, seven, and it happened to be some above that. And each one carries as much of a difference as the difference between where you live and love, between that ego stuff and love. There's a big difference. Every one is that proportion, if not more, of a difference. So this whole exploration of who you are and the beauty of life and of your being is there, but not while you're blocked. Not while you're blocked. It's all about letting go of your blockages. So how do you let go of your blockages? First, you have to want to. Right now, you don't want to let go of your blockages. You want everybody else to change so that it fits your blockages. Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> you want everybody to be the way you need them to be so you're okay, right? Including the weather and everything else, okay? So you change your attitude. You sit there and say, I just made this stuff up. My blockages are the result of stuff I couldn't handle. I couldn't handle stuff, so I stored it inside of me. And now I got all these blockages. And you have to want to get them out more than you want them satisfied. Eventually, you will realize what they're doing to you, and it will be like if I took you naked and stuck you into a 50-gallon vat of roaches and snakes. <laughs> you want out? I want out. That's what you got. You got to want out. You got to want out. Otherwise, you're going to keep finding yourself doing momentary little things that feel a little bit better or don't feel as bad, and then it'll last. You don't get any worse. You're just running around like the hamster in the wheel, just trying to get stuff. It never ends, does it? Has it ever ended for you? Have you ever been totally okay for any period of time? <laughs> it's hilarious. Of course not. Well, when are you going to wake up? You realize it doesn't work. This does work. It does work. So how do you do it? You just do it. You do it. You do it. Somebody beefs at you in the car. You just, of course you're going to feel weird. You're in the third chakra. It feels weird. It gets self-conscious. It feels embarrassed. Or it gets mad and does road rage. I don't care. Either one, fight or flight. It's the same thing. But basically you weren't able to handle it. But because you've meditated, because you, you, you worked on yourself, you catch yourself. The consciousness awareness notices there she is freaking out because somebody went beep. 
All right? I don't think we're going to do that this time. Time to go to God, as Ron Ross used to say. Use it to go to God. Right? Use it to go up. Well, how do I mean use it to go up? Let go. Let go? I didn't say it's not going to happen. I said let it go. Let go. Let go. But it's uncomfortable. Good. No pain, no gain. You know, you're so busy with all these other things. I tolerate, what do you tolerate for relationship? What do you tolerate for sports? My God, look what people do for the Olympics. What do they get? A gold medal they hang on the wall somewhere. <laughs> it's like you're talking about getting the most beautiful thing you could possibly gotten. A life filled with love and joy and inspiration that can help others. And Come on, make something beautiful of yourself. But of course you have to go through some changes. And so you decide, that's what I want to do. So when these situations happen, you catch yourself and you'll see you're justified. Well, he had no right to beep at me. I wasn't doing it. It's just a minute. You'll see your mind will give you all this garbage. You know, listen, when it's all said and done, the highest thing I can teach you is relax. Just relax while it's saying that. Don't listen to it. Don't do what it says to do. Don't get involved in it. Just see if you can relax in the face of a freaky mind. If my mind's going to freak, I'm sitting on a plant in the middle of nowhere's. Aren't I? It's a tiny little planet. Somebody went, beep, and my mind went crazy. I don't think so. All right? What does that mean? How do I make my mind not go crazy? That's not what you do. It's not about your mind. It's about your relationship with your mind. You don't have to do what your mind tells you to do. Lots of people tell you to do things. You don't do it. You just say, okay, be like that if you want. I'm not going to be like that. And you relax. You relax. I've been teaching you lately. You can do positive thinking. That's nice and just letting the mind freak you out. You can do mantra constant repetition of something neutral so you can hang out with the mantra instead of hang out with the mind and or you can relax. In the end, it is about surrender. It is about I am in here, the world unfolds, and I got a little baby in here with me that can't handle it. How about you? I think it's really weird. It's okay. Let's raise it up. Treat it like you would a child. It's okay, sweetheart. We'll be okay. I'll be... <laughs> All right? Just raise yourself. Raise yourself. Do not store those things inside. I want that if that person beeped and you used to get weird about it, that over time somebody beeped and you smiled. You smile. Oh, there's that beep again. And you think it's cute as a button. And the person pulls up next to you, you look and you wave a little bit. But not out of anything, just out of, I love you. I love that you beeped. That was so neat. It's helped me so much that you beeped. You just start being comfortable with things because you're not resisting them. You're not fighting them. And so you do this more and more, and you do it with the everyday thing. You do it with the weather. I'm begging you to do it with the weather. You can't change the weather. If it's hot, it's hot. If it's cold, it's cold. If it's wet, it's wet. If it's dry, it's dry. If it's humid, it's humid. Dig it. Dig that your hair frizzes. Look how different it looks. <laughs> I'm a wild woman. <laughs> Have fun. Have fun. Do not let these things take over your life. And so little by little, you start to free yourself. It's what's called. It's called freeing yourself, raising yourself, not waiting for other things to happen outside that make you feel better. You do it. You're in there all the time. You have the right to, you have the right to change that. You ever change your mind? Does your mind ever change? How about we change it in a nice way? How about we decide how to change it? Say to your mind, now listen, mind, you've been running things for a long time, completely, and I love you. You're a wonderful mind. We're going to try something different. We're going to like everything. But mind will say, but I don't. I know. We'll learn. You didn't used to do math. Now you do calculus. You play the piano. You play tennis. You do all kinds of things. You're really good. We're going to learn to like everything. We we'll like the hot weather, the cold weather. I love it. But then I say, but I don't. I've never liked the cold. That doesn't impress me. Just when you're young, you had some bad experience with the cold, right? So you never liked the cold. I never liked math. I never liked redheads. I never. What are you doing? You're ruining your life. You're limiting your life to the things that match your garbage. Instead, you sit there and say, I am going to learn. It'll take me some time. I am going to learn to love the heat, to love the cold, to love the wet, to love the dry, to love the humid, to love. I am going to learn to love. Why? Because I'm not storing this stuff inside of me. And then the energy will come up higher, which will feed you more. So you'll feel the inspiration to do it. Then you'll do it more. This is called the upward spiral. Will you please do that instead of wasting your life trying to get everything and everybody to be the way that matches you right now? <laughs> it's so funny. It's a complete waste. I'm telling you, I, mean, I know I'm radical with this, right? Getting what you want is way overrated. I mean, way overrated. And avoiding what you don't want is a real mess because it could always happen. Even if you've avoided it, your mind will say, well, it didn't happen this time, but it might next. Be on your guard. 
right? And you just end up have a ruined life. So instead, you work with yourself. You raise yourself. And I mean every second, not the 15 minutes in the morning when you meditate or not. Every second of your life. If you go to the bathroom, you sit down. The moment you sit down, you catch yourself. What am I doing in here? Because you're not going to like what you see. Do you understand that? Good. Don't fight it. Don't judge it. Just right then raise yourself. Raise yourself. I'm sitting on a plant, spilling in the middle of the universe. I'm sitting on a toilet. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You're sitting on a planet, it's been in the middle of nowhere, it's freaking yourself out over nothing. How about we stop doing that? And you start work, use your mind and your will for something great, to free yourself, to liberate yourself. And I'm telling you, every blockage you don't take in and every blockage you release, people ask me, well, how do I know what one I should be working on? I have so many in here. What happens if you stop storing more in there then the opportunity will be for the old ones to come back up and they know exactly how to come back in the order they need to. You'll work this one before that one. You'll look back and say, oh my God, if that hadn't happened first, I wouldn't be able to do this. That's right. It know just like your body, your physical body has an immune system, does it not? It knows exactly what to do when something goes wrong. In what order, how much temperature, how many white cells should go where, how much lymph, pretty complicated stuff in it. That's your gross physical body. So if your lower body is just brilliant and can take care of itself, I guarantee you, you get out of the way, your mind knows how to purify itself. You don't let it. You shove everything back down. You try to use your mind to make it be so the mind can't purify itself. You, you, you know we don't talk about the subject around your father. Oh, isn't that cute? Why don't we talk about the subject around my father? Because he freaks out. Well, then we should talk about it. <laughs> Now, you only get to do that with yourself. Nobody else, right? Don't, don't, don't do that. But with yourself, I don't want that in there, do you? That you have to tiptoe through the tulips throughout your entire life. And so you work, you work on yourself. And every second you let go. And if you're letting go of the lower things, which are easy, it's what I call the low-hanging fruit. If you're causing yourself trouble about something, such as the speed the driver in front of you is driving, the fact that somebody beat at you, the fact that it's raining, you can't do anything about these things. You just decided to cause yourself trouble for no reason. You might as well flog yourself. If you saw somebody sitting there flogging themselves or cutting themselves with razor blades, what would you think? What in the world are you doing? Right? How can you be okay? That is what you're doing with your mind. Every moment you're letting your mind say, I don't like this. Why did it happen? Oh my God, I'm not comfortable with this. No, I don't want to be here. No, this isn't that. They didn't come out the way I wanted to come out. I don't know what to do. It might get bad later. What are you doing? You're flogging yourself mentally. How do you expect to be okay? So spirituality is saying you got to change in there. you got to wake up when the moments happen that are small, that you're just causing yourself trouble for no reason, let them go. Breathe, relax, positive thinking, mantra, I don't care. That's your business, right? You're very ingenuous when you want something. So basically, learn to work with yourself. Then I'm telling you, it's a warning, skull and crossbones, that if you do this, the old stuff's going to start coming up all by itself. You know, so they're like, I'm having these dreams and they're like nightmares. I, I don't understand. I've been doing my meditation. Good. That's a wonderful sign. You think spirituality is you see Christ and lights and dreams. No, spirituality is you've got this garbage in there and you never let it up. And now you're getting high enough to where it can come up in your sleep and it starts pushing its way up. And you wake up and you're sweating and you say, whoa. And what you should say is, thank you. Thank you, mind, for purifying yourself. Well, I didn't have to be there. I got a free ride. These are great things. And if during the day, all of a sudden you find, I'm edgier, I don't know, I'm so self-conscious. I, I didn't used to be like this. It's not working. It is working. You think, it's supposed to be just love all the time. When it's done, it is, right? But unless you remove the blockages, it's not going to be like that. But while the blockages are coming up, it's not going to be so much fun, is it? Unless you decide you like it. Unless you decide this is what I want. That's why I'm trying to give you that. I want this stuff to come up. I don't care what it costs. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how much it hurts. I am in here to free myself from myself. That is what's going on. And I will do it every moment. And if stuff comes up, I'll let it go. Comes up, I'll let it go. You become a letting go machine. And I'm telling you, if you will do that, that energy is going to make it up to your heart more and more. And you're going to find it's unbelievable. It's so beautiful. And life is beautiful. So you keep letting go because it's working, right? And because you keep letting go, you're emanating all this beautiful energy. The spiral goes up so high. And then you start realizing, and I'm going to close it down, what you will realize is the heart is split in two halves. The lower part of the fourth chakra, of that center, right, is human love. You finally let go enough to where you actually care about somebody more than you care about yourself. Not you're supposed to, not I will or she will, <laughs> okay? It's just you, you, you transcended that 
personal garbage that was busy serving themselves, right? Then what happens is if you spend enough time in there and you keep letting go, you keep letting go, there's, you call what's called piercing the heart chakra. The energy will, and it's painful, the energy will make it past the middle point and you will start to feel co- love constantly. Not for a particular person, just love. It's called divine love, spiritual love. You just start feeling love all the time for no reason. Why are you so happy? I don't know. And I'm not going to find out either. <laughs> you're just happy because you're happy. You feel love because you feel love. There's no reason, there's no person, and nothing can take it away from you. All right? And then what happens is you come past that point, and all of a sudden it goes up to the next center. And I'm not going to go through the chakras. I've done it before. All right? And all of a sudden you start realizing that you, you don't... There's a line in the Gita that says, when thought has passed from thinking... These books are so deep. When thought has passed from thinking, what does that mean? You just know things intuitively, through inspiration. It's just when you're clear, I think it's more what you have to look at it, not like magic. You look at it as right now when I look outside, I see me. I see who I like, who I don't like, what I like, what I want, what I right or wrong, right? And therefore, I really can't see what's going on. When you're done with that, and you can actually have the eyes to see, right? All of a sudden, it talks to you. You just, it's obvious. That's all I can tell you. There's no thinking involved. It's just obvious, okay? Because you're not interfering. You didn't put static in the way. You can hear the music. And that's, that's you're getting into the wisdom chakra. You just start knowing things. You don't have to think before you talk. You don't have to plan anything. It's just, it's just a natural oneness with the events that are taking place around you. And all of a sudden, people come to you a year later saying, you know, the, he was talking to you the other, that time a year ago. So you said something, and it changed my life. I mean, it's just completely changed my life. And you don't even know what you said. You don't know why or anything. There's nothing. And it starts happening over and over and over and over again. Now you're talking about higher. You're getting higher. Right, and then you go to the higher, the six and the seven chakras, which are getting out. Now you're no longer identifying with your body; you're identifying with the energy completely. You're not identifying with your sense of consciousness, and all of it. And Master called the sixth chakra the seat of Christ consciousness. You're sitting in a seat of awareness that is just I exist. Not I am a woman. Not I am a man. Not I am happy. Not I am sad. Not I am nothing. I just I'm here. I don't know how I got here, but I'm here. And then in the seventh, you're out. Right, all of a sudden the energy is so high that you start going to these higher states. Now, I, I said I would talk about them, so I did. I don't like talking about the higher states. To me, the topic tonight is love. We talked about love, didn't we? Right, but love, love's left for last. Yeah, because if you're not willing to talk about the blockages, you ain't talking about love. You're talking about a temporary situation of fulfilled needs, and because the needs are fulfilled, I'm not questioning you feel love, right? But not not the way you should, and it's not going to stay that way because somebody's going to do something. I didn't think he would ever do that. Right? I didn't think you would do that. Oh my God, I, I never in a million years thought you would do that. Well, why would you think I would do it? You're not me. Okay? A wise person doesn't do stuff like that. A wise person sits there and says, I don't want to assume the way another person is. I want to love them unconditionally. If you need to go through your stuff, I, I mean, I, I have to want you to, all right? But if I have to go through my stuff with you, it's my growth. It's beautiful. It's the purpose of a relationship, to let go of myself, to grow past myself. Not that you match me. I just have a relationship with yourself. But that's different, isn't it? All right. So that's love. Every one of you are capable of the most beautiful love all the time that you can love going to work, you love waking up in the morning, you love going to bed at night, you love eating whatever you're eating. If you get bad food and it's no good, you love the terrible taste, and you love smelling skunks because they stink, right? You're just having a blast. Do you hear me? That is what is supposed to be going on, but you can't do it now. It's conditional. It's conditioned upon your stuff, isn't it? You're only okay if it matches what you want, and you're never okay if it doesn't. I don't want you to play that game. I like you. I want you to have a beautiful life, which means let go of yourself. Just keep letting go, and it will all happen. All right. Jack